Well, I'm really excited today. I got uh, a little box uh, from the United States. I ordered something over eBay. It happens to be a phase contrast uh, set, a condenser as well as two objectives. Yeah, there are nice uh, stamps on it from Sleeping Beauty. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to unpack it now. I'm going to show you what it is and I'm going to upgrade uh, my uh, microscope uh, because phase contrast, I think that's a really cool thing. I mean, that really opens up a new world uh, because uh, yeah it just the contrast is is really nice um, so let's get started okay so I'm gonna start uh, unboxing the whole thing now uh, I do not want to cut through the stamps really <laughs> I'm just gonna do it on the bottom I'm gonna start here on the bottom Okay, here we go. Ah, newspaper. Um, so, um, let's uh, get started. I think these seem to be the objectives here. Um, be better. I think I'm gonna simply unpack it um, on, on, on the desk. These are um, authentic Olympus. Uh, um, of course, not manufactured anymore. And I had a little bit of difficult time actually finding it. So as soon as I found it on eBay, I immediately bought it. Okay, here it is. Yeah, that is, yeah, that is, that's the condenser. And it's mounted beneath, uh, beneath the stage and then uh, you can rotate it uh, to adjust for the different types of contrasting. More. Yeah, that is how it looks like. Okay, let's go a little bit closer here. Okay, here it is. Yeah, and uh, here you can see the different, yeah, that's uh, the regular, that's the regular condenser, uh, iris diaphragm. And then you have uh, all the different uh, patch stops and so on for the different uh, phase contrast objectives. You have to use the, the right uh, patch stop um, annulus, you, I think you call it, uh, for the right, uh, uh, for the right uh, objective. Yeah, so that's the 40, you can rotate this, put it 20 times, 10 times. Things. This might be actually bright field, that's correct. And that's uh, for the 100 uh, times, okay. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Um, I like this um, and... Uh, yeah, okay, uh, here I am again. I hope you don't mind the mess behind me. I'm currently fixing another microscope. Um, I'm now unpacking uh, this objective and it says PL40, uh, this means a uh, phase contrast positive low, 40 times magnifying. How do you actually know that it is a phase contrast objective? What you do is the following. You take the objective and you look behind it like this. Can you actually see it? Okay. And you should be able to see the phase ring. And as a matter of fact, I do see them a little bit. My eyes are not quite good. Uh, 10 times magnifying objective. Again, phase ring, very well visible. There's a little bit of stuff here on here, but it's not on the front part, it's on the back part. I might be able to clean this off. The thing is, is I once bought a phase contrast objective uh, and there was no phase ring in there. It was some kind of a scam, really. It was very, very cheap, uh, so um, too good to be true almost. And uh, this phase ring was missing, so it's very clear it was not a phase contrast objective. So obviously this one is one because, I mean, it's uh, it's made by Olympus, um, so it's, uh, it's obviously... Yeah not a scam. Okay, um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm now going to take uh, my old CHA microscope uh, and I'm going to now um, attach this phase contrast uh, condenser and the two objectives. Okay, um, so here it is. Um, first of all, I have to lower the condenser. I don't know if you're able to see this. And I'm going to remove now the condenser. This one um, is going to be replaced. It goes in here like this. Obviously it does fit because all of this stuff is standardized. Okay. Um, these are the two centering screws. You have to center the, the, the condenser as well and I move it all the way to up and that's it. Um, I'm uh, finished with the condenser. Now I have to exchange the objectives. Now I have a choice. I've got the 4X here, a 10X bright field and 40X bright field and I have only one more left. Um, so I'm going to replace uh, one of these two. Um, I, I don't know which one. I'm just going to take out the, the, the 40X uh, objective and I'm going to replace this one. Because you can use the phase contrast objectives also with bright field. 
So that is not the problem. Um, how, how am I going to do this? Okay, I'm just going to leave this bright field here. I'm going to take this one out. I'm going to put in another 10. I'm going to put in the 10x phase contrast. And here I'm just going to put in the 40x. Um, this, is, this is a cap here, which is not needed. And I'm going to put in the 40x phase contrast. Okay, and uh, we're we're ready to go. Okay, so everything's uh, been uh, assembled now. The condenser is visible down here. Um, I've attached uh, also the phase contrast objectives. Uh, there is still a there's still two non-phase contrast uh, objectives uh, mounted. And uh, look at this. Not only that, but I also attached a trinocular head, and I've got also now um, yeah a camera. On top here so I also got myself a new uh, trinocular head so now what we're gonna do now is the following I'm quickly gonna show you what you see here um, you can rotate uh, this uh, lower ring here um, and you have to make sure that uh, the number which uh, is on the condenser here matches with the objective that you're using so this um, num the 100 would be um, for 100 times magnifying objective which I do not have However, this setting, I did discover that this setting also works uh, and gives me dark field um, for the 4x and the 10x objective. So that's kind of kind of nice. Um, when you rotate this, this is the zero, basically that is bright field. And uh, that means I do have a, um, a regular uh, bright field condenser as well. This one is for the uh, 10x um, objective, 20x. And this here is uh, actually the diaphragm for the bright field, okay, which is then later rotated beneath it. Uh, 40x of course um, and uh, the 100x so we're all the way around okay so that's basically uh, what I have um, I just thought I might also want to show you a little bit the condenser on the bottom because you did not see this yet so I'm going to lower this I'm going to disconnect this carefully again and you see that is basically what I get here and it's out of focus so I'm going to refocus a little bit oh, that's the wrong way so that is basically what I have here. Okay, so this is uh, the regular bright field uh, condenser with an integrated uh, diaphragm. I mean, that's uh, the thing that most microscopes have anyway, okay? And you can also see here, there are is a, is a ring in here, right? Okay, the face, that's not the ring, of course, uh, that's uh, the, the annulus, okay? And for the different uh, uh, magnifications, you have a different uh, annulus, okay? So that is uh, basically how it looks like from the bottom. And uh, these two centering screws, I'm just gonna show you also um, how, how they actually work. I'm gonna put this back here. And uh, I need to tighten it again a little bit, okay. And it works like this, that now it's again out of focus. I'm going to refocus again. Okay, now it works. Um, it's like this that you, ha you have to loosen these screws and then you can center the condenser by moving this back and forth. And the other one as well, okay, and that's that's pretty critical because otherwise uh, the the image is not going to be good. So I now basically messed everything up again. So I have to um, I got to readjust it. Okay, so that's basically how it looks like. Um, and uh, yeah, um, it's important also to say the following that if, uh, for example, um, I've got the four x. Uh, um, objective in place uh, so now basically I'm using uh, the objective uh, and I can view it in phase contrast and but if I switch this over to the zero position to the regular condenser then I've got bright field so these uh, phase uh, objectives work for both bright field and, and phase contrast it's kind of nice and for dark field what I do is the following I just move in the the 4x objective and I go here I use either the 100 um, or the 40 second setting and both of them work uh, for the 4x and the same also for the 10x 40 and, and 100, both uh, give me dark field, okay? Um, and uh, so that is because I was not quite sure at the beginning whether I can actually also have dark field with uh, this condenser, but it's possible, okay? Um, it does not work. I, I also tried to get dark field um, by putting in the 40x objective and then uh, using the 100 setting here, but this does not give me complete dark field because evidently the, the annulus uh, is, is not large enough and does not block out uh, all of the light. But it's, it's okay. Um, I, I'm quite happy if I have a dark field with a 10x objective as well. I'll be looking um, at uh, three commercial slides, uh, three commercial permanent mounts of, of water plants. Uh, the first one is Lupinia, that's uh, the cross-section of uh, the root. Um, Elodia, very well-known water plant uh, found in many aquariums. 
I made already another video on this uh, where you could actually see the chloroplasts move around and the lily, a cross section. Um, Okay, of the anthers. Okay, so that's basically uh, what I'll be looking at and I'm gonna compare now bright field and phase contrast. Okay, well, uh, this is uh, pretty self-explanatory. I'm putting uh, the slide uh, on the stage uh, and uh, the next thing that I have to do is have to center uh, the phase annulus uh, from the phase condenser. <clears throat> and this is basically what you see. Um, you can see that on the lower right uh, uh, edge, it's, it's a little bit darker. And uh, because what I have to do is I have to move uh, the two levers um, to center this con condenser in such a way that the dark uh, area is, is right in the middle, like, like almost like this now. Um, normally you would use a so-called uh, phase telescope for this, but I don't have that. And this is not in bright field, okay? This is just regular bright field. So I set the condenser in such a way that uh, the regular um, yeah, iris diaphragm is, is beneath uh, the stage now. So that's basically the thing that uh, if you have a regular uh, bright field microscope, that's basically what you should see. Uh, the, the specimen, it's a, a plant cross-section Elodea, that's a water plant. Um, and it is a stained specimen. This is the reason why, why some of the cells uh, look uh, red. It's, uh, as I mentioned already, it's a commercial slide. And I'm, I'm focusing back and forth uh, and yeah. Basically, uh, you can see all of the cell organelles, chloroplasts, and all of these things. They do not appear green because, uh, as I mentioned, it has been uh, stained. Okay, so now I'm switched over, and this is now phase contrast, uh, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, just a second, and three, two, one, and now that is phase contrast. Okay, and uh, it looks a little bit messier. Okay, there are more details visible, and the reason why it looks a little bit like this is because uh, there are more structural details that you normally would not see are now become visible, um, and you can also see that uh, the some of the structures seem to have a bright, slightly bright uh, halo around them. Here you don't see that so well. Okay, but uh, if you look at some of the cell organelles, they basically the background is darker and uh, some of the cell organelles have a slight uh, bright halo around it. That is typical for phase contrast, okay? Um, and uh, this uh, basically helps, uh, to, uh, helps to set apart uh, from the other surrounding structures. Yeah, so basically I'm, I'm, I'm doing the same thing here um, as before, focusing back and forth. This is again bright field and that is the next specimen. This is uh, Lupinius, it's also another plant. Um, again, a bright field, you can now see the nucleus in the middle. Um, it is again a commercial uh, stained, a commercially stained slide. Um, I guess they must have used the same stain because it's, it's red, okay? Um, you can see that the nuclei um, are also quite well visible. They're also a little bit darker. And uh, yeah, and uh, basically let's uh, simply put the image into our mind. Let's remember how it looks like because in a few seconds I'm going to switch again back uh, over to phase contrast. Okay, so there's still bright field. I'm, I'm moving around a little too jerkily if, if you ask me. I'm just realizing this right now. I think I should have actually uh, let the slide simply rest. Three, two, one. Here we go. That is phase contrast. Okay. Um, the image is a little bit darker again because uh, that is typical for phase contrast, at least uh, with my setting, that the background is slightly darker. Um, and it looks again a little bit, uh, how shall I say, um, yeah, um, messier or, or not quite as, as, as calm, so to say, the image. And the reason is again because we can now see more details that are normally not visible. Now by closing, in Brightfield, by closing the condenser, um, it's also possible to increase the contrast quite a bit. Um, but this is in, uh, basically uh, comes with a loss uh, of resolution. Okay, so you see some kind of uh, diffractive patterns uh, and so on and this comes with a loss of resolution and uh, you don't have that in phase contrast. So here you actually see details that you um, normally wouldn't see. So what we have here is actually an overlap of, uh, of staining and phase contrast. And last sample, that is again bright field and that is the lily, a cross section of the anthers. Um, so that's uh, again stained, uh, probably they used a different stain because now some of the cells, the cytoplasm is bluish. And uh, the nuclei, the red nuclei here, and uh, yeah, you can see the cell walls again, cell organelles, some of them are not stained in the middle, okay? The stain seems to use a stain DNA, that's why the nuclei are visible uh, quite, uh, quite nicely. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically what we would expect uh, in, in bright field. And you can see here, it looks, looks, looks okay, but simply for some structures, uh, yeah, we don't see that that well. So I'm going to again go three, two, one, and 
here we go. That is phase contrast. Okay, um, and uh, yeah, um, you can now see um, that here around the nuclei, you can actually see that some of those structures uh, have a bright halo around them. The background is a little bit darker, and uh, then the structures uh, are visible better because uh, they are set off because some of them are a little bit have this uh, bright. Yeah, thing around them. Okay, um, it does appear that some of these uh, structures do a little appear seem to appear a little bit three dimensional, um, like like a, like in a relief. Uh, and uh, but I think that this is does not really reflect the true uh, state of the issue because it simply seems to be an optical illusion that it's actually three dimensional. It's a, it's a very thin cross section. So this is a photograph now in bright field. Let's put them next to each other. Okay. Um, and the same thing in phase contrast. So I'm just basically going through the first uh, specimen. This is bright field that's lupinous. And the same thing in phase contrast. And the last sample, it's the lily, the one that we just watched. Bright field and again, three to one phase contrast. I did adjust the colors a little bit, I have to admit. So what I want to do now is, is I want to give you a short uh, theoretical explanation of uh, phase uh, contrast uh, and also bright field microscopy. I think uh, this helps um, understand everything a little bit better. Um, I'm going to start off with bright field. That's basically the regular microscopy, the regular, <laughs> whatever that means, uh, the one that uh, we most commonly use. And I just want to like uh, to explain this uh, based uh, on the drawing that I have here. It is like this that uh, here from the left side we've got the microscope light and I represent the light uh, using this uh, yeah this wave and uh, this is the amplitude um, of the light and if uh, this uh, light now passes uh, through the microscopic specimen um, what happens is that the specimen which is darker or which is colored or stained it reduces the amplitude and uh, you can of course now see that while the wavelength itself is the same the amplitude is, uh, is smaller and therefore the um, the specimen appears uh, to be darker okay and that's basically what our eye is able to pick up our eye is able to pick up changes in amplitude or in you know, different amplitudes but not phase changes okay so um, that's kind of the, the regular stuff and now let's uh, switch over to phase contrast and uh, this drawing is a little more complicated um, and also this is a very very just a very very basic uh, phase contrast principle and what happens in phase contrast this is um, the microscope optics convert changes in refractive index which we actually cannot see as uh, changes in color um, it converts changes in reflect refractive index into brightness changes so let's have the following uh, situation um, the light um, that uh, is uh, kind of split up um, and there is one light uh, array uh, you can see that basically here everything is in phase okay everything is, uh, is lined up and this light here passes through the specimen and because the specimen has a different refractive index uh, than the surrounding medium um, it uh, in this case compresses uh, the wave uh, so to say and it shifts it over so you can see that the wave that is uh, here that exits the specimen um, is phase shifted compared to the light uh, which uh, go, does not go through the specimen Okay, so that is a uh, this uh, phase shift, uh, th and so this uh, specimen here can be completely clear, for example, and transparent. Um, this is something that we would not be able to see with our eyes, uh, because our eyes are not uh, able to detect a change in phase shift. Um, however, um, at the end, what will happen is is that the microscope optics they uh, allow the the light which went through the specimen to interfere with the light that did not go through the specimen and those waves cancel each other out okay and what we get is, is uh, this wave here which is again reduced in amplitude so what phase contrast microscopy essentially does is it changes um, the uh, a shift in, in phase into a uh, change in amplitude yeah, and uh, phase contrast microscopy was uh, developed uh, in the 1930s uh, um, by a, a physicist, uh, Fritz Ternicke. Uh, he was a uh, physicist and he got, uh, in, the in 1953, I think, he got the Nobel Prize for having discovered this because uh, there's one significant advantage of phase contrast microscopy. It allows you to see live specimens without having to stain them because staining actually kills them. Um, but uh, now we can actually see cellular details that uh, we uh, were not able to see before. Okay, so that is basically it. Um, yeah, so this was a pretty long video, I think. Uh, there is so much more related to phase contrast, I'm not able to talk about this um, right now, but I hope that this kind of gave you a basic introduction. You know what? 
no, I'm not gonna quit now. I'm just gonna add something more here. Uh, the, maybe the question is, should you buy yourself now a face contrast kit or not? How is that? Okay. Um, I have mixed feelings about this. Okay. Uh, so face, first of all, face contrast uh, microscopes uh, or kits are pretty expensive. Okay. They're they're, they're actually quite expensive. Um, you uh, even if you just uh, upgrade your microscope, you gotta make sure that first of all this is possible in the first place. Uh, but they're quite expensive, um, so um, for the regular conventional amateur, I probably, if money is an issue, I probably would invest um, in a microscope with a trinocular head first, okay? So one that allows you to take pictures, okay? Then because then you actually can also, it's a much easier way to, to share pictures and videos um, online. Um, face contrast is really cool, it's really nice, um, but I would say, um, there might be for the average amateur who is starting off with uh, microscopy, there are probably, um, how shall I say, investments that uh, would benefit you more. Okay, um, um, yeah, but yeah, just just my take on on the whole issue. Okay, so now I want to quit. Okay, I wish you a nice day. Happy micro hunting. All the best. Bye bye.